I squared C is one of the simplest communication protocols only requiring two wires and some pull up resistors to work. Typically, you will see values anywhere from 1.2 kilo ohms all the way up to 10 kilo ohms used. Have you ever wondered where these values come from and what the most optimal value for your application is? Well, stay tuned because in this video, we are going to do a detailed breakdown of how to figure out the best resistor value for your I2C up resist. Before we go any further, please go ahead and drop a like on the video. It helps the channel out a ton. Subscribe so you can stay up to date with any future videos. When it comes to deciding the value for your I2C pull up resistors, it is usually a choice between speed and power. By choosing a lower resistor value, you'll use more power, but will be able to run the data bus at higher speeds. Conversely, a higher valued resistor will dissipate less energy, but will require you run the data bus at a slower clock speed to account for the slower rise time of the signal. Now you might be wondering, if it's just a pull-up resistor and a couple of ICs on the I squared C line, then how can the signal rise time be affected by the resistor value? To better understand what is happening, we need to take a closer look at the I2C data bus. Here on the oscilloscope, we have a square wave that you would see on a typical I2C bus. Notice that when we zoom in on the waveform, we see that it is not a perfect square, but rather the edges are a bit rounded and the rise time of the signal is not instantaneous. The reason for this is because there is parasitic capacitance present on the I squared C bus, so the resultant circuit looks more like an RC capacitor circuit whose rise time depends on the RC time constant. As more and more capacitance is added to the bus, the rise time of the signal steadily increases. Too much bus capacitance will cause the signal to become corrupted and the I2C bus will not be able to transmit data reliably. Now that we have thoroughly laid out the problem we are faced with, let's start working on a solution to it. So how do we figure out what the correct value for our pull-up resistors should be? In the I2C bus specification sheet, it tells us what the maximum allowable rise time is for the different modes of I2C communication. For standard mode, a maximum rise time of 1000 nanoseconds or 0.1 microseconds is allowed. For fast mode, a maximum rise time of 300 nanoseconds or 0.03 microseconds is allowed. For fast mode plus, a maximum rise time of 120 nanoseconds or 0.012 microseconds is allowed. And for high speed, a maximum rise time of 80 nanoseconds or 0.008 microseconds is allowed. For most ICs, a logical high is equal to roughly 0.7 times the VCC or input voltage value. The logical low is equal to 0.3 times VCC, but for the purposes of this demonstration, we will use a value of 0.4 volts to represent a logical low. This means that for a typical 3.3 volt data bus, our signal will have to go from approximately 0.4 volts to approximately 2.5 volts, less than the specified maximum rise time for us to have a robust and working I squared C data bus. Taking this information into account, we are able to derive an equation for the maximum allowable value for the pull up resistors. Taking this information into account, we are able to derive an equation for the maximum allowable value for your pull up resistors based on your bus capacitance and your maximum allowable rise time. In this equation, TR represents the rise time, RP is the pull up resistor value, and CB represents the total bus capacitance. By now, I'm sure you are wondering, so how do we approximate the total bus capacitance? And the truth is, it's actually very difficult to approximate total parasitic capacitance present on an I2C bus, but we have a few rules of thumb to go off of. In general, we can estimate each IC pin has a capacitance of approximately 10 picofarads, and each PCB trace will have a total capacitance of approximately one to three picofarads Per inch. Multiply the total estimated bus capacitance by a factor of say 1.5 for some margin and use that value for the total bus capacitance. The I2C spec also gives us some guidelines for the minimum allowable pull up resistor values. We can't just throw on some 47 ohm resistors and hope to mitigate any of the parasitic capacitance on the I2C bus. According to the I2C spec, the maximum current that the I2C pins can sink is approximately 3 milliamps. So we can use that to derive an equation for the minimum allowable value for the pull-up resistors. So now that we have the equations for our minimum and maximum pull-up resistor values, let's go ahead and look at an example. In this example, we have an I2C bus operating in fast mode with the following parameters. 
total bus capacitance is equal to 200 picofarads and the VCC value is equal to 3.3 volts. So taking the values from the table one that we referenced earlier in the video, we can we have our equations for RP max and RP min. So remember from table one that TR equal to the maximum allowable rise time for fast mode is going to be 300 nanoseconds. So we plug in 300 times 10 to the negative ninth for TR. And then for the total bus capacitance, we just plug in 200 picofarads or 200 times 10 to the negative 12th. And then just run the calculation and it spits out a number of 1.77 kilo ohms for the maximum allowable pull up resistor value, meaning you need to pick a value for your pull up resistor to be something that is equal to or less than this value. Then for the minimum bound for our pull-up resistor, we just plug in the same equation we found earlier in the specification sheet. So we have VCC, which is equal to 3.3 volts, minus the V output low max, which as we mentioned earlier, is gonna be approximated to be 0 0.4 volts. And then the maximum sink current on an I2C bus is going to be three milliamps. So you have three times 10 to the negative third. So run this calculation and you get a value of 966.667 ohms for your minimum pull-up resistor value. So in this example, we run our, both of our calculations. So what you would do is you would pick a resistor whose value was somewhere in the middle of these two and a pretty normal value, pretty nominal value would be something in maybe the 1.2 kilo ohm range to maybe 1.5 kilo ohm range. Um, will be something in the middle but of course if you're really trying to save on power losses then you would pick something higher and maybe the 1.6 kilo ohm range um, or if you're really trying to make sure that your bus um, was robust and operating well then pick something closer to maybe the one kilo ohm range And with that, we have covered everything that I want to in this video. Check out the RGB Engineering Patreon for some more information on I2C circuits as well as other premium electrical engineering content. Thank you so much if you made it to the end of this video. Hopefully, I will see you in the next one.